Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. The most uh, most exciting uh, moment uh, here in um, in the city's history. Uh, I'm going to make um, some generally brief remarks. I have a bunch of folks to uh, thank and recognize. Um, after my remarks, I will uh, sign the uh, legislation. We'll have another series of speakers after that, uh, and then uh, we'll entertain uh, Q&A about this announcement. Uh, members of the press may have uh, some other uh, questions or issues that they uh, possibly like to raise with me. I'd be glad to do that around the corner. This event uh, is a standalone event. I want to maintain uh, the discussion about uh, the announcement and the activities uh, for today uh, in, um, in this room. And if, again, if you have other questions that you need to ask me about outside of this, uh, outside of this issue, I'd be glad to talk to you about those around the corner. With that in mind, uh, let me um, uh, first thank and recognize, and you'll hear from a few of these folks, uh, and hopefully I caught everybody as uh, they were coming in, but certainly City Council President Daryl Clark, Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez, Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown, Councilman David O. The Majority Leader, uh, Councilman Curtis Jones, and Councilwoman Janie Blackwell. Got, got, uh, did I get, did I get everybody? Yes. Got them all. Okay. You're also going to hear from, and I want to thank uh, as well, uh, Majida Rashid uh, from the Nice Town CDC, and Fadulan from the Building Industry Association, the BIA, and Connie Morrow from the campaign to take back vacant land. Let us also, I think he is not here, but we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude uh, to uh, Philadelphia's own State Representative John Taylor uh, and uh, all the members of the House and Senate of Philadelphia delegations in Harrisburg uh, for their work and support of this effort. Deb McCullough, Director of the Office of Housing and Community Development. Brian Abernathy, Director of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority. John Carpenter, Deputy Director, Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority. Michael Kuntz, Executive Director, Philadelphia Housing Authority. A number of other members of our administration. Finance Director, Rob DeBow, Managing Director, Rich Negrin. Deputy Mayor for Economic Development, Alan Greenberger and Terry Gillen, Director of Federal Affairs for the City of Philadelphia. I mentioned uh, Majida, Ann, and Connie, uh, but also uh, many members of the initial Land Bank Board and the many advocates for land use, planning, and development in our great city. And can we give a big, big round of applause to the CDC community? And certainly, as you can plainly see from the number of people that I thanked, a lot of work went into the creation of this legislation, and a lot of people were involved in making this day a reality. Now, some of our folks do tease me from time to time that often my thanking of folks, in some instances, is actually longer than the remarks uh, that I might make about uh, the issue at hand. And that's because any great thing and even some smaller things, often involve a lot of people to make these things happen. I believe in expressing appreciation at every possible moment. And there's a reason that so many people have been involved, like 
Councilman Mark Squilla, uh, <laughs> because there are so many people who care. I was not pointing out your sudden arrival, I just didn't want to miss you. <laughs> Vacant and abandoned property do, in fact, have a negative influence on so many neighborhoods across the city, the properties around them, and our city as a whole, making it easier to find productive new uses for these properties is a critical step in revitalizing communities, attracting new residents and businesses, building household wealth, and certainly strengthening our city's finances. When I was a city councilman, when I first started running to become mayor of this great city, I called for the creation of a land bank in Philadelphia to help bring those vacant parcels together for productive and strategic uses. As mayor, my administration has consistently pursued that goal. In the fall of 2010, the Vacant Property Working Group was established, chaired by Finance Director Rob DeBow and Managing Director Rich Negrin, to develop a strategy to deal with vacant land. Many city agencies came together in this working group, including the RDA, Public Property, OHCD, the Law Department, the Commerce Department, LNI, the Philadelphia Planning Commission, and the Mayor's Office. They worked for a year and a half on a strategy which became the foundation for the legislation that I'm about to sign. But let me also say, none of this work would have been possible, ultimately, without the strong support and focus and guidance and suggestions and the commentary back and forth with our Philadelphia City Council, and they deserve a big round of applause. And to the CDC community, let me also say thank you for your diligence, your vigilance, and for never, ever giving up and holding all of us accountable because you're the ones who are trying to develop properties. You're the ones who are in the neighborhoods that so many of us represent, but we can't be, of course, in every place and in every neighborhood and in every community all the time. You're the ones who suffer through, at times, the seemingly unending process to get a property from debilitation to rehabilitation. Philadelphia is known across the United States of America as having one of the strongest CDC communities of any city in the United States of America. And it's to you that we owe this work product and our continued investment and involvement in this work. And so please give yourselves a big round of applause as well. In the last two years, the administration published the disposition process, posted all publicly owned property online, created a single point of contact to acquire vacant land, and work with the private market to competitively sell land. And soon, with the signing of this bill, Philadelphia will be the largest city in the United States of America to create a land bank. Our land bank will be a powerful tool for the renewal of Philadelphia's neighborhoods. This land bank will, in fact, facilitate moving properties from blight to usefulness, whether it is a side yard, a new home, a new business, a community garden, or even a larger development that could transform a neighborhood. A land bank will also help us to partner with the private and nonprofit sectors to take derelict tax delinquent properties away from those who tear down our neighborhoods and convey them to new owners who will contribute rather than detract from our communities. This bill marks the beginning of a new era in Philadelphia, and it is very definitely a part of the new day that we talked about now six years ago. And with that, I'm going to sign the legislation. We'll come back, and you'll hear from all the speakers that I mentioned just a second ago. This is uh, Bill Number 130156 A. It's an ordinance repealing Chapter 16 500 of the Philadelphia Code entitled 
Councilmatic District Development Program and replacing it with a new Chapter 16-500 entitled Philadelphia Land Bank that authorizes the creation of a land bank and provides for its appointment, powers, and duties, all under certain terms and conditions. It's the law of Philadelphia. And so with that, let me first ask our city council president, councilman for the fifth council district, council president Clark, for his remarks. By presidential directive and decree, uh, let me now call up Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez of the 7th Councilmatic District. Thank you. Thank you to the many, many people who worked on this concept for many, many years the many people who taught me along this camp, six year campaign and journey um, about the importance of creating a game changer given Philadelphia's reality. I very humbly uh, represent the seventh councilmatic district, the most diverse district in the city of Philadelphia with a lot of challenges, but incredible people and a lot of potential. It is for them and, and our journey as we looked at how do we redevelop the community that we thought this was the most important thing that we can do. Council President Clark and, and Councilwoman Janie Blackwell have been trailblazers as it relates to economic development. I often kid them that I wish I had their uh, longevity in council. You look across the city and you see development, sometimes development happening with our partners in this room, not because of government, because too many times we stand in the way. This has to be a game changer. It has to be a game changer for the city of Philadelphia. If we're going to create the jobs and the opportunities, the small businesses and redevelop neighborhood to neighborhood, not for just those who want to come, but those who live here with those startling poverty rates that we have in the city of Philadelphia. I want to thank all the partners, the mayor's administration, all his team in the economic development unit, Michael Coons, who we would not be doing this if it were not for his steadfast leadership in looking for the common grounds with all of us. Council President Clark, whose leadership and experience has taught me that sometimes in this process of development, we have to be very deliberate and we can't leave things up for chance. We still have a lot of work to do how we put this board together, how we set policy, policy that will impact affordability and accessibility for all is very important. I want to congratulate all of the board members who've been appointed to this board, including uh, my champion in my office, Jennifer Cates. And I want to entrust them with the responsibility that all the partners here expect from us, the responsibility to make sure that we are fair, that we are deliberate, that we are predictable, and that we leave no one behind. This has to be a game changer for district like mine. And I often say this to my advocates in the community, unless the seventh councilmatic district is doing well, the rest of the city is not, because we are a microcosm of Philadelphia's potential. So to all of the team, to my council colleagues who I have annoyed enormously through this process, Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come in and to get this done. Thank you for helping me get this across the finish line. And I'll leave with the words that I learned from Stacy, who is the chair of the Women's Revitalization Corporation, as I set out on this journey. When you start this stuff, you think you know it all. And Stacy said to me, Maria, it is not that everybody um, doesn't want to be a homeowner, but affordability is one that is limited to who has access to what is affordable and good housing. And so she taught me that it is not one menu, but a menu of options 
for every single person in the city of Philadelphia. So I look forward to our continuing work. I look forward to you continuing to hold our feet to the fire to get this done right. I've learned through the legislative process that there is no perfect, but Philadelphia is primed to do great things. I believe in Philadelphia, I believe in my district, and I believe that this will be the game changer that we need in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, my friend and colleague. Um, I just want to follow up on a couple of statements that the mayor made and, and Councilwoman Keona Sanchez made about the process and getting to where we are today. And he talked about, the mayor was talking about how many names he had to call, that meant how many people were engaged, both in terms of individuals, organizations, members of government, council, 17 of us had to be in this. Uh, uh, there was an editorial thrown in there every now and then, and you know what I mean? And it was a news story lobbed in from the press every now and then. And it was kind of like making sausage, you know what I mean? It's kind of ugly, you know, all over the place and different back and forth. But at the end of the day, as was concluded with the mayor signing of this legislation, this land banking legislation, Mayor, I want to thank you so much for doing that uh, for your continued support. It was now a neatly encased package. All right, I hate to keep talking about this sausage thing, right? But at the end of the day, it came out to be a wonderful thing, a wonderful event. Uh, I want to thank all of the people from my perspective uh, and the council people who represent significant portions of vacant land. Uh, we have to wrestle with this all the day, and we're sending the signal today that we heard you, those advocates out in the neighborhoods. You're tired of looking at the blighted conditions. Uh, we, have moved, we are moving forward in an aggressive process that will establish uh, in our minds uh, a process that will be like none other in the country. Um, we'll be able to get properties online for for-profits, non-profits, for individuals who just simply want a side yard, a place to garden. So I want to thank the mayor uh, and his team uh, for continuing to work through us through the numbers. Um, I want to thank the advocates who um, had to dust me up every now and then, but it's all good because it's all about process. And most importantly, I want to thank uh, my colleague and my good friend, Councilwoman Keona Sanchez, oh, those numerous conversations that we had, always focusing on the end game, which was the prize, which is a signed piece of legislation to allow us to move forward to the land bank. I want, Maria, I just want to thank you so much for your hard work and your due diligence, and, and the people of the 7th Councilmatic District should genuinely feel very proud to be represented by you. So I just want to thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Majida Rashid. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Nicetown Community Development Corporation, a member of the Philadelphia Association of CDCs. Our organization is also part of the Citywide NAC Alliance, and we partner with the, the Land Bank Alliance and the Coalition to Take Back Vacant Land and all the grassroots agencies and, and organizations that have worked so very hard to get to this point um, I want to thank Mayor Nutter, um, Council President Daryl Clark, especially um, the leader in this piece, um, Councilwoman Quinonez Sanchez, who really, really took um, the lead on this piece and getting a full understanding of this whole process and educating the community, which is also a priority. I just want to thank everyone um, at PACDC, Karen Black, amazing, amazing. The hard work, unbelievable hard work that people put into this all day. It's a 24-7 thing just to make sure all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Um, I just, I want to be brief, but I do want to just um, not be redundant, and, but I do want to co-sign on, on all the thanks that were given. I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, but I want to tell a little story about um, uh, understanding that I have as um, a leader at the Nicetown CEC. Um, when we first started to do development, the first properties that we tried to acquire um, belonged to a city agency. 
and we were all excited. We got this letter saying these properties will be so and so and so, yours, when you do this, 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 and that. So we had all these ideas about what we wanted to do with it, knowing the need for affordable housing and starting and creating home ownership. But to make a long story short, by the time those three properties, and two of them were historic properties, by the time we got the properties, we had two. And one was lost to sheriff's sale in some kind of twisted rigmarole. And I'm sure most of us here can understand what that process is. Um, that was our first understanding of land disposition and in the city of Philadelphia, and it scared the heck out of us. Um, the next thing we, we, we came, became familiar with was um, overseeing properties, um, maintaining vacant lots with the city's land care program. And a nice time CDC is contracted by the city to maintain about 200. A few years ago, when we first began, actually, not a few years ago, but when we first began, we started with a planning process. And one of the things that I do want to urge is to, um, for hopefully the mayor and the council and city administration can work um, hard to um, develop a strategic plan so we can start to do this, get the board appointments together so we can start to do this. Um, because when you realize the long drawn out scenario and in the process things may be lost, part of our land care process, um, we realized that um, about 40 vacant parcels that we had been taking care of for years were going to be Nice Town Court 1, which is in Germantown. That's our first major project that we developed. And then also, um, Nice Town Court 2, which you see developed close to the Wayne Junction in Nice Town. Those are examples of um, lots that were maintained mostly by people in the community until they were ready for development. And now they serve to um, show what affordable housing is all about with 87 units of affordable housing and people still asking for more. So I will say to you that that's the the road that we've traveled, and there's a lot of other stories like that, but it, it just lets me want to emphasize, don't forget the grassroots. Don't forget the side yards and the gardens and the, and the community gardens that produce um, vegetables and flowers and things like that, because we need that. Let's get together and figure out a way we can have balance um, and, and get this started with this, which is what a, is the historical landmark for Philadelphia, and I want to thank everybody involved, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Good afternoon. My name is Ann Fadulin, and I'm honored to be with you here today at the invitation of Mayor Michael Nutter and City Council. I stand here as president of the Building Industry Association, Director of Development of the Dale Corporation, and a representative of the broad-based, hard-working, and incredibly persistent Philly Land Bank Alliance. However, I'm most honored to stand here today as a proud Philadelphian. Philadelphia, I wasn't born here, but this is my chosen hometown, and when a place where you choose to be rises to the occasion, it's that much more special. Nearly 10 years ago, the Building Industry Association released a report referred to as the Fix It Philly Report. The report itemized 10 items that we thought a Philadelphia fix would help to attract development into our city. We broke the items in this report into three categories. One was the low-hanging fruit, things we thought were probably relatively easily achievable. And then a middle category we thought, well, maybe with some work we could achieve some things. And then we had the last category, which was the don't hold your breath, not in my lifetime. <laughs> the two items in that, that category were a new zoning code and the establishment of a land bank. <laughs> a little over a year ago, we gathered in this very room to witness the signing of the new zoning code. 
Now here we are today to witness the establishment of the largest land bank in the country. Two pieces of landmark legislation within 18 months of each other. Way to go, guys. <laughs> Evidence of what an incredible time this is to be in the city of Philadelphia. Although the concept of a land bank was introduced and advocated for in the BIA report, it could not have been accomplished without the undying efforts of the campaign to take back vacant land and the subsequent formation of the Philly Land Bank Alliance. Both of these entities brought together diverse groups of active citizens and organizations to make sure the vital need for a land bank remained an integral part of the public discourse. With the establishment of this land bank, Philadelphia is taking a huge step forward in turning blighted vacant properties from being a burden on the city to becoming an economic opportunity, not only for developers, but for neighborhoods and residents as well. The unprecedented coming together of private developers, community developers, urban agriculture advocates, small businesses, design professionals, and the city of citizens of Philadelphia was an integral force in getting a land bank established. The leadership of Council President Daryl Clark and Councilwoman Maria Sanchez, as well as the hard work of the Nutter administration and staff were all necessary to accomplish this monumental task. It wasn't always easy or harmonious and some of the parties involved took some pretty hard hits. But everyone hung in there, and by working together toward a common goal, we proved how resilient and visionary we Philadelphians can be. Although the signing of this bill and the establishment of a land bank is truly a landmark occasion, none of us can sit back and believe the work is done. The members of the BIA joined the Philly Land Bank Alliance in urging City Council and the Nutter Administration to continue to move the ball forward by fully funding the land bank, proactively transferring all publicly held properties into the land bank, and establishing a permanent land bank board as quickly as possible. The sooner we get the land bank up and running and fully active, the sooner we can work toward our common goal of turning proper, vacant property into an economic asset and continuing development of Philadelphia into a truly world-class city. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Constance Morrow. I'm a volunteer and a board member of the Women's Community Revitalized Program projects, excuse me, which is a member of the Take Back campaign of Take Back Vacant Land. Today, I'd like to thank you, Mayor Nutter, for signing this bill. It's a new year, and we created a new land bank. This is a great start for Philadelphia 2014. For those who do not know me or remember me, I testified on behalf of this bill so many times last year. With this land bank, we can begin to uplift our neighborhood as well as yours. Where I live at, in the 2300 block of Germantown, there's North Philly, there's five houses when it should be 69. And most of them are vacant lots. There's so much garbage and debris on my block, sometimes my block looks like a city dump. My grandchildren always say, Grandma, Grandma, won't you just move? I tell them, no, I'm not moving, because one day my block will have more houses than trash. With this land bank, my dreams just might come true. One thing, one thing we fought for, and we got it in this bill plan. The land bank must, must plan for how this land is being used. This will give you and me a say-so what goes on in our community. And it will lean on to more affordable housing, good jobs, and new facilities. It took a lot of us, city council, the mayor's office, and all the people of Philadelphia to make this happen. You have my word that I will stay involved. Together, united, we can make sure that the land bank is successful. Thank you. Thank you to all the uh, all the speakers and, um, and uh, Connie. Uh, I think we can do something about the 2300 block of uh, Germantown, at least on the trash side. And 
look forward to working with you on the housing side. Uh, before we take questions, let me also uh, recognize, uh, as in the audience, I saw him earlier, my mistake. I want to thank the president of uh, Philadelphia Association of CDCs, Rick Sauer, uh, who's here with us. Rick, thank you. And so with that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'd be glad to take any questions uh, with regard to the land bank bill uh, and its uh, components. If there are other questions for me, I'd be glad to entertain those around the corner. Yes, Jen. Um, great question. Um, so we're in that process now. Uh, budget is uh, starting to be uh, put together. We still have some time and there's a lot of discussion that will take place between uh, all the different uh, city agencies, the administration uh, folks and uh, city council uh, to figure out uh, just at least for a first year and then uh, years going forward what the budget uh, would be. Uh, but we don't have a number today. We are, I'm not going to get into a ballpark. Uh, what I can tell you is that we are committed uh, to making sure that uh, both financially and operationally, um, from a management uh, standpoint, that the land bank works uh, and uh, some of that will take some money uh, and uh, more than, maybe more than a little bit of some, but it'll take money uh, and uh, we're committed to making sure that it works. And obviously we have our own financial constraints, uh, but this is very, very important to the future of the city. We expect, um, after all is said and done, I think we're anticipating that the land bank should be uh, fully operational by the end of this calendar year. And so I think around and about that time, uh, you'll start seeing uh, the, uh, the process uh, taking place. Any other questions about the land bank? Fantastic. Great day in Philadelphia. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>